I've said it before. I've said it before that I personally think there's nothing more scummier in this world than minorities taking advantage of minorities. When I see a black person scamming another black person, my heart breaks, especially when the person looks like you or they come from the same place that you do because you know for the most part that when you're scamming them, you're scamming them because they are holding out hope that they can maybe be like you or that they can maybe change their situation and pull themselves out of the depth of poverty. So I always fucking hated it. It's always something that kind of stung me and grates me really, really, really bad. So this story about DJ Envy and his um, flipping houses fucking partner guy getting investigated is bringing me a lot of joy and peace because it's good to know that these guys aren't getting away with it because this is fucking heinous don't scam your own people scam the man scam other people right scam corporations if you want to but don't scam your own people don't be a piece of shit but dj envy unfortunately looks like he might be in a bit of trouble here dj envy might be in a bit of trouble dozens of tri-state area investors say they were victims of a ponzi scheme losing six figures each in what they thought was a legitimate real estate deal News 12 senior investigative reporter Walt Kane has this Kane in your corner investigation. I was happy to be a part of something, especially something this big. Stanley Acosta thought it was his chance to give his family a better life. He invested $150,000 in cash in a real estate development deal. The money was supposed to be used to flip this property in Patterson. But Stanley says almost as soon as he signed the deal, something felt wrong. One of the biggest flags for me was he didn't count the cash. Um, I'm giving you 150000 in cash. You're going to want to make sure that every dollar is there. The developer... Man. You have to trust your gut, in it. You have to trust your gut. He went through the entire process of, you know, um, vetting these guys before he did the whole fla house flipping thing. Because if you guys know, DJ, DJ Envy is involved in this. He was involved in this um, business before where he was teaching people, you know, black and brown people, how they could get on the property ladder in, in, you know, in the hope of maybe building up their property portfolio to then go and flip houses to make loads of money. And the idea behind it was that you'd buy these shitty houses, you do them up, you flip them for more money, or you just hold on to them and flip them for somebody else for more money, whatever. He, it's this whole thing that he kind of built out there. And he got people to invest in some projects to buy houses with him and his team or to attend um seminars and shit that's basically the part of the scam it's funny in it your instincts always tell you when something is dodgy this guy went through the entire vetting process he watched tons of videos listened to all their podcasts was following them on fucking social media and the one time his gut started screaming at him was when he handed the money over to those guys and they didn't count it he was like that was weird I wouldn't have probably noticed that to be fair. It wouldn't have struck me as a weird thing. If I'm already if I'm already hypnotized by your scam, I would already gave that money and I wouldn't have thought of it. But his antennas were already starting to go dee -dee 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 -dee, when he, the guy didn't scan when well, the guy didn't count the money he gave him. God damn it, bro. With Cesar Pena, a social media influencer who advertises real estate seminars. Stanley's contract promised in return for his one hundred fifty thousand dollar investment he'd get $45,000 in interest. A third Exactly fucking um, Natashki. Seminars are always a red flag. You know where seminars are a red flag for me? Because I've never understood this, but I guess, it's make, I guess if you're a scammer, you want to make as much money as possible. You want to fucking just squeeze as much as you can out of your marks. But I've always thought to myself, why wouldn't you just make all your seminars free? Doesn't matter what level it is, make them all free. But then the only thing that you sell is like actionable things like okay i'm gonna be i've got an investment fund and if you want to be involved in an investment fund it's this it's, it's x mount to enter this fund or whatever but the seminars of how you teach people how to do stuff you sell you do it for free because in the day you you know i don't know do, 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 do you understand what i mean oh no people are laughing you, you can't do it. i guess it's the whole that's the whole that's the whole um scam right it's to make them pay so that people think because i never understood why i would pay for somebody to speak at a, at a fucking seminar when i can get the information for free on youtube why would i pay but then i guess there's some people out there who want to be spoon-fed shit and then they hope that the extra payment that they're making is going to allow them to have like that one-on-one -on -one sort of like help and shit i've never understood the whole idea about paying for fucking seminars it's one of the craziest scams that exist to be honest 30 percent return in just five months 
But nearly a year later, he hasn't seen any money and says Pina has stopped returning messages. Well, From a financial shit. standpoint, it's killed me completely. Um, I've had to take out loans to pay off credit card debts. And Stanley isn't alone. Kane in Your Corner has uncovered over a dozen lawsuits filed by people who say they invested with Pena and never got the money they were promised. Just texting him like almost every other day, like, hey, what's up with the money? So he's like, I need that money, bro. Like, constantly texting him, texting him, texting him. He keeps delaying. See, and that's the thing I hate about this shit. All these people look like they're like, all these people look like DJ Envy or that Cesar Pena guy. They all probably come from the same place. They may be Dominican, Puerto Rican whatever colombian whatever they're all from the same place same community and they know what this means they know that kind of money is not easy to get they know that the reason why these guys are jumping on this flipping flipping housing thing is because it's really outside of like starting your own business getting on the property ladder is the only way for people especially minorities like myself to try and get from you know, being working class and middle class. It's the only way really to get yourself up there outside of maybe working a lot, you know, at a job and getting promotions and shit or starting your own business. One of the quickest and easiest way to do it, quote unquote, is to obviously get on the property ladder. So those guys used the fact that that is well known to their advantage to scam people that look like them. For me, that's the lowest of the low, like absolute scumbags. And Dwayne. Our investigation finds in some cases, Pena sold investments in properties real estate records show he never owned or sold years earlier. The lawsuits already totaled close to $10 million, with more being filed every week. For the last Jesus year and a half or Christ. more, it's just been taking money in from people and, and there's been no, no likelihood of people getting their money back. Some of the lawsuits also mention Rashawn Casey. He's a radio personality who goes by the name DJ Envy. Casey often appeared with Pena at real estate seminars, but his attorney insists he's a victim too. You know what's funny about DJ Envy? DJ Envy was used in a scam, like the celebrity endorsement guy. Like, you know this guy from radio. He's legit. But he was also used in the scam because DJ Envy is super flashy. He's always showing his cars and his, you know, life's house and his, you know, his um, lavish live lifestyle and shit. He's always showing that on Instagram. So people bought into the scam because these guys look like them. They're from the same you know, place as them. Um, there's obviously that, that legitimacy of like a celebrity involved and there's legitimacy involved of somebody being like on the ground who's done the work. So it's quite, in, in theory, it's a shit scam, but I understand how people got duped because you've got one guy who you know is kind of the business brains and then you've got another guy who's like the celebrity endorsement guy who looks rich so your brain makes one plus one equals two he looks rich how do i get rich it's the flipping houses and then you give these guys their money all your money sorry it's fucking sad man dj and me also um, gave five hundred thousand dollars as an investment uh, which he has not uh, received back yet pena's attorney declined to be interviewed but in a letter to the court he complains about the tactics he says some investors are using he writes my clients need time to first protect their family from threats of death, rape, and physical harm. After that, he writes, they need to make serious threats of death, rape, and physical harm. Don't you hate when people do this? You scammed me. I'm the victim. I then threaten your life, rightfully so, and then you start crying about it. What do you expect is going to happen? I've done less for 50 pounds. So I've done more for 50 pounds, right? I can't imagine what I would do to somebody if I willingly gave them 150,000 in order to kind of help me get rich, to pay for my kids' fucking tuition, to help out my mum for something, to put my mum in a... Like, do you know what I mean? Because that, that kind of money is probably savings money, I'd imagine. Those guys, it's probably money you saved up for something. You're thinking of a business to invest in. You want to put it in the stock market. Then somebody who looks like you comes along and is like, hey, look, I've got this idea. Don't get me wrong. There should be a loads of red flags, right? Anyone that tells you you're going to get huge returns for the small amount of money you put in, like you put in 100, 150,000 and you're going to get back 500,000. Don't believe them, right? Anything that looks too good, and if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. But you trust them because they look like you. Then it doesn't go well and you're out of your money now. 
that money that you are depending on to help your mum, to help your family back home, to help you get started with uni or college or an extra course, to put your kids through school, to help out. Imagine if you've got a kid that's got a learning disability or something and that's money you need for fucking tuition. Like all these things that you need money for, for life. I don't know, whatever. And then, and then this guy has the guts to try and cry like a victim because you threatened his life and his family. What do you think happens when you play people's money? You don't play people's money, man. Especially people that come from humble beginnings, immigrants, working class people, you know, lower middle, lower middle class people who are just trying to make it, just trying to figure out how they can make life comfortable for themselves. Maybe afford a couple of holidays per year. Maybe be able to take out their fucking partner for a dinner once a month or something. That's all they want. Maybe be able to get a second car. Nothing too crazy. That's why they trust you with their money. And then here you are spunking it and now you're crying. My clients need time to protect their family from depths of death, threats of death, rape and physical harm. Of course you're getting threatened with fucking death, rape and physical harm. You should get more than that, man. More. To your whole family, your whole entire bloodline. After that, he writes, they need to make serious and complex decisions as to how to move forward and what attorney or attorneys to move <laughs> forward with. As for Stanley Acosta, he just hopes he and his family get some of their money back. You see, this is what this is what I don't like. This is what I don't like about my chat. This is why I don't this is why I don't like about this chat. This is why I don't like about this stream chat. You guys can be so right. Bodybuilding news bodybuilding.news. But if you're dumb enough to take financial advice from a morning radio DJ dot dot dot. That's it. As bad as I can feel for the victims, should you really be taking financial advice for your family's future from a radio DJ called DJ Envy? Should you hold some level of blame for that? For putting your family's future in the hands of somebody called DJ Envy? Damn it, man. When, when, you, when you guys are right, you're right. Back. If I had an opportunity to say something to Caesar and his family, it would be to just uh, do right by the victims. The SEC says before you invest money in any business deal, have an attorney review the contract and beware of anyone who guarantees high profits, especially if they also say there's little to no risk involved. Okay. I understand what you guys are saying. I get it. Some of the victims do need to hold some level of respons personal responsibility. But I still think the scam kind of takes advantage of people's desperation. We've just come out of, what, three and a half years of a lockdown, right? We're still recovering from the financial ruin of that. In some places in the world, we're in a fucking recession. Employment, unemployment rates are through the roofs. It's really hard to get personal loans, let alone loans to put down on a mortgage and shit. Life is hard out there. We're all just getting by. The cost of living has gone through the roof everywhere in parts of the Western world. So when somebody comes offering you a way out, and also keep this in mind, guys, if I'm not mistaken, this whole flipping house scams thing that he did, it started around the same time the pandemic happened, like 2018, 2019. So it was a perfect time when people were struggling. They were getting fucking fired from their jobs and needed a way to kind of generate money. And they thought that would be a quick way to do it. That's when those guys took advantage. So as much as I want to blame the victims, I also think it was super, super, super conniving, super premeditated and evil for them to take advantage of people at their lowest moment, when they were super vulnerable, when they were desperate, they did it. Like a good scam artist, right? That's what scam artists do, right? They kind of pr prey on you when you're in your most weakest moment so they can take advantage of you. But I really, really, really do think there is something deplorable about taking advantage of people that look like you, one of your own. I don't think that's cool in the slightest. I've never ever, I'm never going to agree with it. Don't get me wrong. Scamming in general isn't cool, right? But if you're going to go and try and scam fucking PepsiCo or Amazon, go do your shit. But I think in general, <laughs> doing it to people that look like you. I hate it, man. I fucking hate it. I really do. I really do. Thank you. So hope they all get their money back. 
um, it's probably unlikely considering how these kind of scams work or the litigation and shit. Maybe they'll set it outside of court, but I hope some of these guys get their monies back because 150000 from your savings isn't a lot of money. So it's a lot of money for people who come from humble beginnings. That probably took you a whole lifetime that you are now for it to kind of save that money. So imagine now trying to fucking make that shit work. So hopefully they get their money back. I'm really rooting for them if that happens. And yeah, um, not surprised really not surprised not surprised but we have to also say big up to D J joe budden joe budden was the first person to call that scam out i think he kind of refused to even go to one of their shows or something i think joe budden was one of the first people to sound the alarm and he's not you know he's smart when it comes to podcast business but i wouldn't call him like an entrepreneur but he was one of the first people to come out and say you know what this doesn't look this looks a bit dodgy and he's been vindicated to be fair now everybody sees that yeah dj envy is on some fuck shit absolutely crazy man absolutely crazy um it's not enough to make as much money as he's making hosting his radio show he has to then go and scam people that look like him to get extra money to pay for jordans and rolls royces it's fucking awful man i fucking hate it anyway moving on